So, what's going on YouTube? It's Darius, Coach P here. Yeah, man. Lovely California. Um, again, I'm just here on vacation, but couldn't miss this opportunity to link up with you again, man. Just a little bit of background, just really quick on how me and Coach P met. The last time I was in California, I actually vlogged it. Uh, so if you haven't go, if you haven't checked out that vlog, I'm gonna go ahead and put the link probably somewhere in the description. Go ahead and check that out. But last time I was here, I was on Running Canyon, right? Mm -hmm. I was running. Um, a couple of me and my guys were out there. They started talking to them. Me and him got the chit chatting. Figured out that he's in the health and fitness industry. I'm in the health and fitness industry. Um, are you are you currently personal training or are you used to personal I training? Do, I do train one personal client, but okay. I keep it to a bare minimum. Right. It's exclusive only, to be honest. Okay, so basically we're both in the same industry, right? Uh, so we just kind of, you know, kind of vibed off that kind of, you know, network. And then we follow each other on social media. So we've been kind of keeping in contact. So when I found out that I was coming back here, I wanted to kind of take advantage of the opportunity, get some content, um, do a little interview with you as far as your life out here in Cali, um, exactly what you do. You have your own brand, Life Lessons, has a t-shirt on here. So kind of wanted to get a little bit more background information as far as like what Life Lessons is, um, how are you liking and how are you surviving out here in California, right? Because one thing, um, that we always hear about California is that it's tough to be out here, right? So we all know it's expensive out here. So so they say, right? So they say that it's expensive out here. Um, you really kind of got to be on top of your, your stuff in order to survive out here. But not only are you doing that, but you're kind of doing it more the entrepreneur route, right? So you aren't taking the guarantee paycheck, which would frighten a lot of people being out here. Um, I actually personally know a couple people who moved out here after they got out of college, you know, from Indiana, lived out here for a while and they ended up coming back, right? Because it's just tough and they couldn't really survive. So they had to take a step back. So kind of give us a little bit of background as far as like who you are, what your brand is. Um, how do you like living out in California? Just, just go ahead and spill it out. I mean, we talked a little bit earlier, so yeah, go for it. Yeah, I mean, I mean, who I am, I'm actually a former certified exercise physiologist. I didn't recertify, I dropped it. I was like, look, you know, I'm not gonna keep paying these dues for people to tell me what I can and cannot say, like, I'm gonna say it, you can't cure cancer. Now, do I have the answer to that myself? We both know the answer to that. We know the answer, yeah, know so the answer I, I'm not, I don't yeah. think I need to elaborate, but what I'm gonna say is, is you know, I, I only use and pick on that one because it's the big one that everyone's afraid of, it's the one that, people look at it as if it was Voldemort, right? If you're a Harry Potter fan out there, yeah. don't say his name, right? Don't say cancer, um, especially not that you can cure it. You gotta say manage, you gotta say prevent, yeah. using these words. So um, I actually did not recertify in that or the exercise medicine ambassador, neither one. So at this point, I mean, I guess all I really have less is the fact that uh, I have a bachelor's degree in exercise science and I kept just educating and teaching myself after that. But, but you classify yourself as a coach, right? I do say coach. Yeah. Um, it, it's something that just kind of been deemed on me from another company that, you know, we made it to the top, we rose to the top, couldn't go any higher, and eventually all my clients, they just, just coach, coach, coach. It was either Dr. P or they said Coach P. And, um, you know, from there, I just kind of rocked with it. And, and it just, and now at this point, I just introduced myself as coach, just stuck home. And uh, so, yeah, I mean, what, what do you have for me? What, hit okay, me, hit me with um, so let's start off with what exactly is Life Lessons? Like, what is the brand? Right. Where are you trying to take this? What is the message behind it? Um, what is it that you do with the people that you work with? Mm -hmm. What are some of the principles you stand on? Just kind of give us the background yeah. on, on, on Life Lessons. Okay, so Life Lessons definitely originated because I had a, I had a hunger to travel. Hands down, I had a hunger to travel. And I knew that there was a way to continue to travel and not really have to work a nine to five. One, I've never worked a nine to five, so I don't really know what that life is like, but I can imagine it's quite miserable and I got that from everyone else. It's like the news, I don't have a TV, I haven't owned a TV in the last hey, four I years. Hate, I hate watching TV. Yeah, I haven't owned a TV in four or five years at this point. And um, it's the same thing with the news. It's like, look, like I'm not gonna let this stuff dictate me. Um, and now you got everybody on the same frequency, right? You got 99% of people all walking in one direction and I wanted to walk a different direction. So life lessons really, it's just the lessons that I've been able to take 
that life has given me the opportunity to go ahead and experience and I was able to just create this curriculum. I wanted to always kind of own my own institute, almost like Charles Xavier if you watch X-Men. You know, I grew up really big on superheroes. Um, we got Comic-Con here in San Diego right now, yeah. downtown, so that's that's pretty incredible. But, you know, I grew up with that superhero mindset, and with that being said, like, I always wanted to be the 1%, the one that could do things that no one else believed that they could do. I wanted to not only do it for myself, to prove to myself, but to do it to show others that you can do this, and all you gotta do is, you know, click your fingers and clap your heels. Um, and that's why I created Life Lessons. So really it wraps around a, a, an acronym, something that was special and important in my life, a stage in my life that I'm always gonna remember. And it was named at the Rocco. And Rocco stands for rituals, open heart, crystallized dreams, candy, and optimization. And, you know, I found that in order for me to get here, in order for me to start making the dreams that I had become a genuine reality, a profitable reality at that, that I needed some structure. It's why I think that the people go to the Army or the Navy. It's why I think that, you know, we may follow our parents' advice up to a certain extent. You know, and, and we need structure without guidance. That's why I think we need a mentor. Like, I myself, as a coach, I have a coach. I have mentors, multiple. Um, and I, and I only, I'm, I'm looking for another one at this point. I just want to learn. I want to suck up all the knowledge. And, you know, I just go ahead and rewire that and distribute it to you. So life lessons came because I feel like, you know, everyone has a problem and I, and I feel like I had the solution. I was able to solve problems. And how do I do that? Well, one, we just identify the problem. We rewire it by implementing rituals, which are habits, and we are consistently what we do. Yeah. Um, you know, from there, I, I figure we need to figure out how to master what do we rewire? What did we just change up? What did we rewire in our lives? Now I need to find ways to master it, put some life, pump it into it, taking action, right? Not just thinking about it, but taking action. And then go ahead and adapt it. And that's just another thing that I teach my people within Life Lessons called IRMA. Identify, rewire, master, and adapt. And I find that it works for any solution. So feel free to try to apply that, ask me questions. I know he's gonna put some links up somewhere. But um, yeah. you know, that's what Life Lessons is. Okay. That's what it is. I mean, it's just taking open heart, open heart, like this gratitude, key to happiness, and putting more gratitude in people's lives and start realizing like, look, we live in America right now. There should be no reason why I don't care where you're at, whether you're in the trap or whether you're in the penthouse suite, why you shouldn't be smiling. And you know, you look at a place like Africa, you got people that are just the most happiest on the planet. When you look at them, you think that they're poor and unfortunate and they're looking at it like, I'm more rich than you. And they don't even know that. So, um, you know, that's where gratitude comes in. Crystallized thought, you know, it's its own concept. Just all focusing on taking your thoughts that flow like water and, and, and crystallizing that so that you now have it to review. Because uh, if you look at one of the Chinese proverbs, it says that the faintest ink will still outlast the strongest memory. Now don't quote me verbatim, but that's exactly what it's saying. So something that you write down, you can freeze it in time, you can freeze it in history, you can review it forever and always, 10 years down the line, versus a memory that you didn't capture, um, a thought that was worth billions, that now is only gonna make it to the grave where all the billionaires, all the trillionaires live with their thoughts. Right, okay. So what I, what I really, the main kind of purpose behind this interview is entrepreneurship, right? I feel like that's becoming a huge thing now, right? Everybody wants to go more of the route of being on their own and not necessarily being confined to a nine to five, not being confined to somebody telling you how much of your time is worth, right? Which I agree with that, you know what right, I mean? Like right. nobody can tell you how much you should get paid per hour. You know what I mean? If you're capable of producing more than what you know your company tells you that you're worth more, I don't see anything wrong with that. Not saying I, I think that everybody should be an entrepreneur because I don't think it's for everybody. I definitely don't. Some people need, like you said, structure. Some people right. need to be have a boss. Somebody needs to have a manager. But you chose to go the route where you didn't want to. You wanted to define success and you wanted to find your own path. So again, like I said earlier in the interview, we have this conception that California is just so tough to live in, man. And I'm looking around like, these houses are beautiful. Like, these are, like, you gotta have money to live out here, right? So, how are you able to maintain not necessarily having a mind to five, but still being able to take care of the things that you need to take care of? I think, uh, I think uh, on, on social media, you mentioned that you just recently paid off one of your student loans, right? Yeah. So, how, how what are the principles that you're standing on in order to enable to get that done and get that taken care of. 
Well, I think we had talked, we had a discussion earlier, and you know, we said it was really coming down to one word. And can you remember what that word was? Discipline. Discipline. Yeah. It takes discipline. That's that's just point blank. Period. Like it's gonna take discipline. How did I knock out one of my student loans? Well, one, I had to be disciplined. Yes, but before that step, I needed to become aware. Like I had student loans, and I'm just paying them this, you know, insignificant amount every month that I wasn't making any dent towards. And then, you know, I started a couple months ago, I started opening the letters. Well, I wasn't even open. I know what they tell me. And you're, oh, yeah, you're paying another man, one, right? Man, man. So I wasn't even opening them. I was just yeah. ignoring it. And what I was ignoring was, how much was I paying in interest? And that's what I didn't get. And I wasn't making any, um, any real impact on the principal. And I didn't understand that. I didn't know what the principal was yeah. versus the interest. And, you know, I think through my mentors and through talking to other people, I, I was able to start really grasping that idea, grasping that concept of interest, principal. Um, but again, I had to become aware. And then once I became aware, I had to get real disciplined. Yeah. So what does it take? I mean, you know, I went through a three month span where I'm like, you know, I'm not drinking. I went through um, some time where I'm like, I'm not gonna eat meat because I know that it's not it's not healthy for my gut. Hey, um, y'all on the vlog know that I'm on the same thing right now. I'm exactly. not eating meat yet. I've been exactly. I, I see that. Yeah. And yeah. he he inspired me with some of that. What I watched, I watched. He said, "Look, I'm on like a month or something like that yeah, yeah, of just no meat." Like, or it might be it might be more than that. It might be I'm more here. than that. Yeah. And that's what it is, right? When you go ahead and you commit, you make a decision, you commit to something. You know, that's making a decision first off. And after you go ahead and you make that decision, what comes out of it is now get to look at the results you get to look at um, well wow I did this for one month and look how much better I am yeah, yeah so I think that's a little bit of what it takes in general is have the discipline be willing to adapt and you know just just keep taking risk don't 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 shy up you know be courageous in your endeavors uh, don't listen to people uh, oh, oh, California's expensive. Well, you know, I was told that up, down, left, and right, but not once did I flinch. Not only that, but we sat there, we went on a tour of nine different cities and did speaking engagements on the way. Um, I tried to get grants from universities and colleges and it, it didn't work. It didn't work how I would have liked, but this is life, right? You adapt. Um, you adapt and overcome. I believe the Marines say that. That's a big saying, right? And I think that's a little bit of what it is. Like, not, not to listen. Like, if you're an entrepreneur, like, stop, stop listening too much information is actually more dangerous than just having the right information, yeah. right? Like, and we social media, it's out there. Yeah. Oh, well, I heard that I should put this vibrating belt on my abs and I'm gonna have abs. You know what? I was silly enough to buy that at one point in time in my life when I was still in my teens, somewhere around like 17 or something, because I was just being lazy. That's the reality, I was being lazy. I was like, oh, I could put this on my abs, it's gonna stimulate, I already had abs, I just wanted better abs. Yeah. And I started realizing certain, certain vanity uh, reasons it, that stuff just doesn't matter anymore to me like now I look at it, I'm like wow I can it's tough to believe that I actually went and brought that little belt that vibrates before it was a real fad um, because I was just was in the industry and I was seeing this stuff come out early on so you know I would say stop listening listen to yourself and when you do listen you know take some of that constructive feedback don't don't just be so high up that your head is so so blown up like an airhead that you know no one is better than you I believe that you should believe that no one is better than you, but I believe that you should believe that everyone has something to offer. Yeah, you gotta humble yourself. Yeah, right. You gotta humble yourself. You gotta admit to yourself that you don't know everything. Somebody's gonna know something that you don't know. So, okay, so you're out here. So give me, give me a little bit more of the practical approach as far right. as like how you're able to you know, survive out here, yeah. pay off student loans. Like, yeah. what are some of the tactical or practical advices? Well, before you come, you need to you need to visit. And in my opinion, it's my opinion. And I say that where now that I've done it, you know, now I'm looking at other countries of, well, where am I just gonna go on a one-way ticket before I even visit? And I say that now, but I say that after I've already done it on a different approach where I know a little bit now, where, um, you know, I visited. So, to be practical, visit. It really does help to know, like, you could think that it's one thing, but it could be a completely different thing. You hear all these things about Cali, and you're like, oh, it's expensive, it's this, it's that, it's this, it's that. And you get here and you're like, wow, like almost honestly, 100% of that stuff is not true. And it's just, it's just mindset. So, you know, if I try to get real practical on it, I would say, you know, what did it take for me? One, I never counted my finances ever. I used to believe that money is just not that important. And now I believe that, um, no, money isn't everything, but, it counts. Yeah, the place is place in, in the world. It has its yeah. place because yeah. if I want my company to grow, guess what it's going to take? It's going to take funds. Even if you're a nonprofit, it's going to take funds. 
right? Um, if I didn't have the money to drive up to LA to go to have a business meeting with one of my business partners, my financial advisor, actually, I would have never met Darius at Runyon Canyon on a hike. Yeah. Because I don't have the funds to drive my car to fill up enough gas to get there. So money isn't everything, but it counts. So know what comes in, know what comes out. You know, if you look at the owner of Tesla, Elon Musk, you look at Steve Jobs, you look at Mark Zuckerberg, they know every single dime coming in their company, you know, every single dime going out. So before you go somewhere, before you go ahead and take that leap, you know, get get some quotes. I knew that I was gonna pay at least one thousand dollars in rent to be here. That's what I knew. It's crazy, man. Here I am complaining about six fifty. Six fifty a month. I'm, I mean, I, I'm not complaining, but you know, keep, keep going. Keep going. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Military. Yeah, military going out here. So we'll, uh, we'll hold up for a second so y'all can actually hear us. So yeah, you know, I knew that based off of talking to everybody else, right? That's what I knew. So what did I have to do? I had to prepare for at least $1,000, so I made my budget out. You have fixed bills, and then you got pleasure. With your fixed bills, go ahead and calculate all that. That's what I recommend. If you're watching this video right now, go ahead and say, okay, rent is six fifty. dollars Say, car insurance is one twenty. dollars Say, I spend about, at a minimum, just by going to work, gas, about three twenty dollars a month. Whatever. Write those numbers down. Those numbers are fixed. And then that allows you to see what do you even have for extra or what do you not have that you thought you had that you blow on in the club and now you're really taking it out of your rent money and now you're stressed financially, which is a form of wellness. Financial wellness is one of the dimensions of wellness. So, you know, before you say money's not everything, recognize that it still counts. Um, so practical advice, count your finances, people. Count what's coming in, count what's going out and write that stuff and look at it every single day. Like right now, if you're not able to tell me how much money you made this month and how much money you spent, then download an app. Download an app. Yeah. Download an app, get a pen and pad, you see the pen here, and start writing these numbers down. Um, you know, save your checks and go ahead and count up all your checks. If you're working nine to five, count your checks up. And then you start looking at these numbers, you're gonna realize, wow, they're taking so much from me in taxes that I'm really not even working for, I'm not even earning what I should be getting. Like I really need to actually make about four more dollars an hour just to make what I thought I was making for the last three years. Mm -hmm. Maybe now you leave that job. Or maybe you go ahead and add more value to the marketplace and ask for a raise because you deserve it and they'll give it to you because they know you'll leave or they won't give it to you because they know you'll leave and they got somebody else that's gonna replace you anyways. Then you realize how invaluable you were to the company as a whole. Things start changing, but you gotta look at these things. I gotta look at my loans, right? So, you know, that, that really is what it takes, you know, really calculate your finances. If you don't know what's coming in, what's coming out, then I would say, you know, get that in check. A little more practical, you know, I went through three months where so I was like, you know what, right now, P, you you in California, great, you made it, that's dandy, and you want to experience a little bit because you're just working so hard in your company, you're drilling home, that, you know, you need a little break. But then that break came a little extended. So check in with yourself, right, reflect. And I had to say, you know what, I need to step away from everybody that I met for now, and I need to be with me. I did that for three months. And then I said, you know what, to up the ante, because I want to always challenge myself, because that's what's going to incite growth, I need you not to drink for the next three months. Oh, but you got three travel. You're going to Atlanta, you're going to be in New York, you're going to be in Connecticut, and then you're also going to be back up in San Francisco. You're not going to drink during any of those? Nah. What are you going to places for anyway? Business. Do you really need to drink? No. Do you have the money for it? Don't look like it, because I'm calculating right now. Right? Um, you know, before I even got here, had to stop smoking weed. It was like, look, like you need to stop. Like this is an expensive habit. It's one that you know, in some ways, I'm gonna sit there and I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, just, I'm gonna agree with it because I've studied marijuana as a drug for physiolog physiological uh, enhancements when it comes to sports, whether it's Olympians or people in the NFL. And so I'm able to sit there and study this from a, from a research standpoint. So I have different views. I live in a place in California where it's socially acceptable, where CBD is a form of healing. So, um, even with that being said, I had to sit there and be like, yo, you gotta stop. You gotta stop. Right now, you know, you just are not able to handle this right now. You gotta redirect your funds because you're aware to something different. So, you know, is it expensive? No. Ty Lopez already said it. We both saw this video earlier today. Yeah. You have the money, you're just not prioritizing. Yeah. Your yeah. priorities are not in check. You're not balancing yourself. So, that's a little more practical. Okay. Um, all right, so to wrap this interview up, man, again, appreciate your time. I got one last question for you. So, speaking to all the fitness entrepreneurs, those who might be trying to go in a direction of 
you know, kind of being their own boss, kind of doing their own thing. Um, specifically to the fitness entrepreneurs, if you had to give them one life lesson from Coach P, well, what would that one life lesson be? Okay, so if we're talking directly towards the fitness entrepreneurs, um, I'm gonna say, care for what you watch. I'm gonna say, care for what you watch, care for what you listen to, because there's a lot of sad, saturated information out there, right? Everybody is a guru now, so it's tough to see, well, who's telling the truth and who's not? And um, so I would say, I'll say, be careful, be mindful of who you're watching, and like recognize the fads. I think we talked about earlier in this interview. Sweat belt. Yeah. I bought the sweat belt mm -hmm. way earlier in my career. At this point in time, this is approximately 11 years ago. Has the person that you're looking up to even been in the industry for longer than a decade? No idea. Or did it just happen overnight? And maybe they got you know a CrossFit certification for a thousand dollars, and that's all you actually needed and they're calling themselves certified. And I'm not coming at CrossFit in any sideways fashion. What I'm saying is, is did they put in their 10,000 hours? Or are they brand new? You know what I mean? Like, and there's nothing wrong with that because I think it's a great thing to come out of accounting or finance or being a librarian or something that you were doing just for the finances. I think it's a great thing when you can come out of it and do something that you're more passionate about. I think it's beautiful. But what I'm saying is when you're following these accounts on social media, if I had to give one piece of advice for fitness entrepreneurs, it's one of the biggest blow-ups blow on the market right now. You know, be careful what fads you listen to. Be careful what diets you listen to. You know, be careful what you hear about fruit. Oh, uh, fruit, that's too much sugar. Come on now, stop being, that's ridiculous. That's ridiculous. Your small intestines aren't even set up to really digest anything much more than fruit and plants. So, educate yourself. Yeah. But yeah. you're sitting there eating dairy, sitting here eating meat we know these things already like just go ahead and wake up and educate yourself so i would say if i had one piece of advice watch what you listen to watch what you, who you follow watch who you call a guru um and put your ten thousand hours in before you go ahead and start recommending something to somebody else and i would say just be mindful educate yourself you know you hear something that's cool go research it again after you heard it y'all heard it straight from the man man be pay attention to what you believe because what you believe is super important because it shapes your reality. It really does. Again, man. Yeah, yeah. Appreciate, appreciate you. Yeah, man. Appreciate your yeah, time. Man. I'm gonna wrap up this Cali vlog. I'm about to go scuba diving. He's about to go take care of some more stuff. Um, yeah, so thank you for y'all tuning in. Hopefully y'all enjoyed this interview. Hopefully y'all got something out of it. We're gonna have to connect again, man. Yeah, we're gonna definitely. have to connect again. He's moving out here. He don't know it yet, but he's gonna move here. And uh, we got a lot more of this stuff coming. Yeah. Read a book and listen always. to yourself a little bit more. Always, That's always. It. Appreciate y'all for watching. Oh, come brand ready. <laughs>